Hey everyone, it's Jordan from the Music Zoo. It's time for fresh drops. This week we've got a lot of heavy hitters from Fender Custom, Gibson Custom, and more, so let's start. Let's use two hands for this one. This is a Gibson Custom Shop EDS 1275 double neck. Probably one of the most iconic guitars Gibson's ever made. I feel like this one's a, like a good generational test because you're either going to play Eagle songs or Coheed and Cambria songs. You tell me. I think you could do both. Pretty cool, iconic, you need it. You know what's rarer than a 1959 Burst? A 1958 Carina Explorer. And we're super lucky that Gibson Custom has decided to remake these guitars for 2022. So this is a 58 Carina Explorer. This one is the White Guard, gold custom buckers, got the top hat knobs, gold tuners on the back. This is just like the original. This one even has a really nice like ripple in the Carina going up the neck and through the back of the body. This is a really nice one. I mean, they've all been really nice, but this one is especially super cool. This next Les Paul is pretty freaking cool. It's a 54 Les Paul spec by Garrel that has a VOS green lemon top. And this one is kind of like a mishmash of 54 and 59. So we gave it 59 style humbuckers. We kept the speed knobs and wraparound that you'd see on a 54. Gave it the aniline cherry back. Clue some tuners. And it still has the 54 chunky neck. So if you want like a really chunky neck Les Paul with the muscle of custom buckers, there you go. All right, next up, one of our best sellers for 2022. This is the Tony Iommi SG Special from Gibson USA. So if you're looking for a USA production guitar that still has all the Tony Iommi tone and looks, this is it. Chrome covered P90s, which at knobs, got the Grover tuners on the back with Tony's signature. It's one of the coolest guitars ever. Grab it now. All right, next up from the Fender Custom Shop, we've had a couple of these in the last few weeks, Poblano Strats, but this one might be my favorite finish yet. This is super faded aged shell pink. So let's zoom in there real fast. Looks really nice against the alder with the black guard. Kind of a little pink, a little like peachy, but still almost fading into white. Here's the back. Roasted quarter saw maple neck. I like this bit of aging up here. So it's like your thumb was hanging on to the lacquer over here and wearing it away over there. Got the Poblano pickups, so if you're looking for a Strat that's a little more higher output than others, these are the pickups that are going to do it for you. Here we have a PRS S2 Series Custom 24. The finish on this one is Fire Red Burst, and so it looks like just any other Custom 24, but what I like for the addition for this last year from the S2 Series, they're introducing Pattern Thin as an option on the Custom 24. So if you're a lead player who wants a skinnier neck, this is the guitar for you. It's got a push-pull on the tone to split the humbuckers. Really nice mahogany body. Pattern thin mahogany neck. PRS locking tuners. Again, I'll say it forever. The S2 series, made in America, for under two grand is a value that you really can't beat. Love them. Next up, shout out to Music Man for working with us on this Music Zoo exclusive access with an amethyst purple finish over a killer quilt maple top. Number one question asked on these guitars, are they stainless steel frets? The answer, Yes. Stainless steel frets for every YouTube comment in the world that's been asking about it. So there you go. These frets will last you forever. A quilt maple top, roasted figured maple neck, Schaller tuners with the pearl buttons that are super nice. We've got a number of these. So go on the site, pick out your favorite top and your favorite weight, make it yours. These are really special guitars. All right, for the next one, people are like, I really want that new 77 Tele Custom from the American Vintage 2 series, but I want that nice belly cut. Fender has answered that problem with a limited edition version that has the belly cut. Same exact specs as a production model, except the comfort of that added. You got the wide range neck pickup, top hat knobs, single coil in the bridge, maple neck, got the bullet style truss rod, Fender F tuners, full package, but a little bit more comfy. This is how you're supposed to hold a flying V, like a professional. Cradle it, make sure it's nice and safe. We got a number of Gibson USA Flying Vs in stock right now, all in the same natural finish. So if you go on our site, you could see our amazing photography, pick out your favorite wood, pick out your favorite weight, your favorite neck dimensions, make one yours. What's cooler than a Flying V? Not much. I was gonna say this next bass is a ripper, but it's actually a grabber. Hey yo, this is a vintage 1974 Gibson grabber bass in natural. This thing is still pretty clean. I would rate it like 7.8 to 8.2 out of 10 on the clean scale. Still got a really nice uh, stiff sliding pickup so it's not going around anywhere. You got a, uh, the bridge cover is still included. The back has a little bit of wear to it, nothing too crazy. I think uh, you plug this into your favorite fuzz pedal and 
get going. This is a cool bass. Sounds really nice too. Lightweight, super resonant. I think someone should grab this pretty fast. That's it for me. I'm all done for today. And now I'm gonna kick it over to my unplugged Fresh Shops correspondent, Garrel, to go through these guitars in the back. See you later. Hi there, Garrel here, your Fresh Drops acoustic correspondent. We're gonna start off today's acoustic selection with the top of the line L-series guitar from Yamaha. This is the LJ26, made in Japan. So it has a beautiful Engelmann spruce top, as you can see here. Indian rosewood, which is solid for the sides and back. Nice maple binding for the heel cap as well to match. Also the sound hole rosette is that wood material as well. This one is the jumbo size of guitar from them. You have an ebony bridge and fingerboard with the mother of pearl sort of diamond inlay up to the East Indian headstock veneer with a back strap as well. And you have a five piece neck on this guitar also with these nice Godo top of the line tuners for it as well. Very deluxe guitar. Again, top of the line for Yamaha. If you haven't given one of these a try, I definitely suggest checking one out. It could be this one. Next up, we have a couple of flamed out guitars from our friends over at the Taylor Guitar Company. So this one is a K26, which is their Grand Symphony body style. It's a K series, so it is all Koa for the top, which is nicely figured on this one. The sides and back, which are also nicely figured. This one also has maple body binding as well. It has their sound port cutaway with the ebony cover on it. It has maple for the inlay up the neck on the ebony fingerboard, maple purfling as well up around the headstock for the Taylor logo and headstock logo also. So next up, we have a 614 CE from Taylor in their builder's edition. As you know, the 600 series is all maple guitars. So this one has a really nicely figured wood set for the back and for the sides as well. Spruce top on this one. Builder's edition gives you that silent satin finish, the wing bridge. You also have that armrest bevel. It has some really nice maple purfling along the top and the sound hole rosette. Beautiful ebony fingerboard on it, which is kind of streaky there. Nice mother of pearl for the inlays and the headstock veneer and all that stuff. If you haven't tried one of the Builders Edition guitars, this could be a nice entry point for it. Next up, we have a D18 from the Authentic series from Martin. This one is a 1939 reissue with their aging package on it. So as you can see, it's an Adirondack spruce top. And if I angle it a little bit in light, Nick, can you see some of that aging wear up here? There's pick wear, yep. simulated pick wear on the pick guard, the sound holes like a little bit worn away there all around the edges. As you know, the 18 style guitars are all mahogany for the back. As you can see, it has the correct tortoise pick guard, the historically accurate body binding, the historically accurate mother of pearl 18 style reducing dot inlays up the neck, the authentic Martin logo for it as well, those open back Waverly tuners on it. These are really cool guitars, the top of the line Martins made with all hide glue construction, that kind of good stuff. I'd recommend giving one of these a try as well. So now we're gonna move on to some historic reissue guitars from the Gibson Acoustic Custom Shop in Bozeman, Montana. They've been doing some different reissues of their sort of like pre-war and historic guitars. This one is kind of like a good place to start for the selection of guitars that we have here. So in the 30s, Gibson was referring to what most of us would identify as the dreadnought body shape as the jumbo, which is why what we think of as the jumbo later on time became the super jumbo on down the line. So this one is a 1934 reissue Gibson jumbo and it has an Adirondack spruce soundboard, as you can see here, mahogany for the back and sides, the historically accurate clean binding on the guitar, the sort of straight line bridge with the long saddle through it. It is all high glue construction on this one, this nitrocellulose with this nice sort of aged VOS type finish on it. This one has binding up the neck with pearl dots, the historically accurate Gibson logo for the time in pearl, open gear Waverly tuners with the ivory button, and this one for that year has a really big, fat, deep neck profile, which is a V shape on it. Really cool, comfortable neck shape, which I like quite a bit. Another interesting feature for this year is that the neck heel also is that sort of V shape. So the next iteration of the Gibson Jumbo was the J35. This one is a 1936 reissue. Again, you have the Adirondack spruce soundboard, the mahogany for the back and sides, that cool sort of like authentic matted nitrocellulose finish package on this one. So some of the things that changed between this guitar and the previous jumbo is you lose the neck binding on it. The heel shape moved over to this more sort of like modern, at least to the way that you think about Gibson acoustic guitars, modern heel there. Some of the uh, features as far as like the binding change, the, the fire guard is added there. And then you also have the silk screened banner logo for these guitars as well as strip tuners, which are the three mounted to the strip of metal that goes on the back of the headstock. The next shape on this one is also kind of like a V profile, albeit slightly shallower. 
So next up, we have the guitar that probably most of us think of associated with Gibson acoustics. This is the 1942 J45 reissue. So by this time they had reached kind of what the modern J45 is. So again, it has the sunburst uh, finish on top of an Adirondack spruce soundboard, still mahogany. You have some differences between this and the J35, like the top trim and binding. This one does have the pearl inlays on the bridge, which traditionally were used to hide uh, two bolts that would hold the bridge onto the top. But here, I think they're just used for sort of like an aesthetic feature. Still no neck binding on it, but with pearl dots, you get an extra one on the 45. You also still have that banner logo. And again, the strip tuners on this one. And this one has a much thinner, more sort of like oval shaped neck profile to it as well. If you haven't checked out these uh, authentic acoustic reissues from Gibson, I would definitely recommend doing so. So thanks for watching. If anything caught your eye, definitely give us a call or shoot us an email if you have any questions. Or you can set an appointment to come and see any of these guitars in person if you are local to us. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like this. Or follow us on our social media channels at The Music Zoo if you're seeing these videos there. Catch you on the next one.